Yes, I'm very uh, happy and honored to start this marathon. So, meeting some friends, I was asked, will you speak about Hans-Peter Feldman's contribution to Münster? No, I won't, even though it can be considered a miracle because an artist proposed to renovate a public toilet and do it in a very, very, very subtle and high quality way, but it's not a work of art, it's just a working public toilet. Because that is a kind of uh, basic need. Everybody needs a window, everybody needs like to go to the toilet without having to pay for it. It's a kind of human uh, question of dignity. And so I'm quite interested to talk about miracle, and I picked a few images from 77, 10 years later, and another 10 years later, not talking about what's going to happen next year. So, in 77, 12 artists were invited to go to visit the city, check out possible locations, and make a proposal. So the idea was we wouldn't talk to them, we would only speak to them when we were being asked. We would not interpret them so they had a possibility to do whatever they wanted to do. And I will only present one work from 77 of uh, Donald Judd, which still remains there. And in a sense, it is really a true miracle because it was not acknowledged as a work of art for about 20 years. There was no graffiti. People were not aggressive towards it, even though there was a huge aggression in 77 and 10 years later, because it's a very straightforward proposal, one outer ring which is in lie of the land and one inner ring which is water level like the artificial lake. So it was below the horizon and it was not saying, hey, I'm a work of art, look at me. It didn't have any kind of outgoing ego thing, but it was more like a scientific corrective. So people thought it had some meaning not that of art, but of something else, and they didn't understand it, so they ignored it. Now, there's a true miracle situation, and I hope you'll encounter it next year, which is a churchyard, and that is pretty much left alone, which is rather unusual for this super uh, consumerist city, very kind of historicist, because it was bombed and rebuilt, so it has a kind of a Disneyland character, even though after 50 years of restructuring, it has taken on its own patina, but there is a churchyard which is left alone, which has not been put through the dry cleaners, and the city has a tendency to make everything very tidy and super kind of organized, and suffocates kind of future in a sense, as a certain repressive, liberalism, uh, which has qualities, but it has also kind of shadows. And this churchyard was sort of highlighted by a work of Ian Hamilton Finley, who picked a quote of Annette von Droste-Hülsow, a romanticist poet, who was sort of rediscovered pretty much in the early 80s through feminism because she was considered to be a spinster, but then one realized she determined her own life and he is quoting her with a very beautiful poem and he put it in the site next to kind of graves from the 19th century. Another miracle because that of time is a work by Maria Nordmann where she has a grand park and the park took 30, 25, 28 years to really grow. And that is clearly that the park is a sort of the first democratic collective momentum of art and public art after the French Revolution, where obviously the aristocracy had to give in to be still be part, playing a role. And therefore, you know, I mean, we are in a park. And this is so much of, a, of something which belongs to everybody and nobody. Around the corner from the, the, uh, the work which I showed of Hamilton Finley, there's a rock. And George Brecht, who, one of these great fluxus artists, who 
considered the event as a, a particular momentum of stillness, of, uh, of exactly the opposite of what an event is supposed to be today. It is not an outgoing thing, but it's more a kind of a momentum of reflection. And he chose the void, word void, and this was impossible to translate into German, because if it would be German, it would be either die Lehre, then it would have a kind of Heidegger uh, uh, philosophical kind of momentum, or it would be emptiness. So he decided to keep the English word void, and he said, if you don't like it anymore, the city who acquired it, they can turn the rock over, and then it's just a rock. So it's a kind of proposal where all the artists invited should not do something for, for it to stay, but just for the time of three and a half months during the exhibition, even though some works remained. For instance, this sanctuarium is a kind of an, an, an architectural kind of Baroque reminiscence of a local architect, Schlaun, and whatever happens inside happens by itself. And then in the, at this time of year, it sort of is very, very unorderly and not tidy as a city sort of is and thinks of itself. So this is an ongoing momentum, which is, since it's, it's a round space, it is very unobtrusive, but it changes and people change along with it. And you can never tell how changes are because you are part of the change. And this is what makes this kind of experiment or this exhibition as a long time momentum interesting because when it started, nobody would have ever thought that a tradition would be possible. Okay. Now, this is truly interesting. There's a work of Bruce Nauman, which was proposed in 1977. It's an inverted pyramid, and it deals with reception and perception. If you are inside this pyramid, you are being looked upon. You are being totally under control. And so it's a kind of a true sense of, of as it, the, 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 uh, um, the title says, square depression. It's, it's very, the architecture around it is kind of banal. It could be anywhere in the world. They are kind of university buildings. And it was always, um, it was not possible to do it. And then it was done 30 years later. And now it is being part of the campus. And it has a, a, a sense where kids are using it for, for, for roller skating and stuff like that. But it's also where people are there to be on their own and to meet. So it's, again, something which doesn't look like a work of art, but it takes on a kind of function by itself. So it, it creates a kind of collectiveness, which is also um, an, a sense of isolation. It's very comfortable to be with other people without having to know them. So this is like what, what, what is private, what is public, and that is a thing which is changing all the time. So um, the, 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 the idea is to find out what change is and what the relationship is between an aesthetic kind of awareness and the experience of doing something which asks questions and brings you independently sort of of the the overall art world into a sense where you are suddenly confronted with something which you have forgotten, it wakes up again, and it's presently there, and then it disappears again. Thank you.